Here we go. First 10 problems this quiz. What do we do here? Okay, this is just chain rule, right? That's pretty easy. Shouldn't be too hard. So, multiple guests here. I mean, all the traps are like people forget how to do chain rule, right? So, two times, and you're, it's something squared, so it's two times x cubed plus one to the one power, I guess, times the derivative of the inside, so 3x squared. You're looking at those options, you're like, well, what matches up? Um, yeah, this is like, this is the person who doesn't know what they're doing. And this is a person who forgets chain rule. Person also doesn't know what they're doing. They just derive the inside. That's a terrible trap. This is a person that forgot the two. The answer is E. Good trap questions. Pretty easy to me. Any questions? Moving on. You better stop me when I... Yeah, if you have questions, tell me to slow down. Go, bro, if you do it again. I have to delete all my work. This one. Okay, you're deriving... Oh, ho, ho, ho. they're being sneaky. So, because it's not just X, it's lin of X, right? So what I'm going to do to approach this is say it's F prime of lin of x times the derivative of the inside 1 over x. So, is that how I would do it? No, I don't like writing that. Into, that's going to confuse me too. So, if f of x is this, f of lin of x is just plugging in the lin. So, it'd be lin of x squared plus 2 times links right here. And now I'm going to derive this. So my f prime of lin of x would be 2 times lin of x times the chain rule of the inside just for this one, 1 over x, plus 2 times 1 over x. Okay, cleaning that up, like 2 over x. This is like 2 lin of x over x. Looks like e. There you go. That was kind of weird. Yeah. Go over it again. Yeah. So the way I'd approach this, and because the weird thing is you have it in here, the first thing I tried was like saying, oh, it's just f prime of lin of x times 1 over x, like chain ruling that. But then I was like, oh, that's going to be really weird. No. So I wanted to find this f of lin of x function. Since f of x equals this, what I ended up doing is I'm going to plug in lin of x for each of these. So this equation, it's like saying f of something equals something squared plus two times the something. The something I'm plugging in in this case is lin of x. So lin of x is lin of x, is lin of x. Now it's asking me to derive this. So how you derive this, this is like lin of x squared. This is a chain rule just for this term, like something squared. So it's going to be 2 times that something. And then times the derivative of the inside, so 1 over x. And then derivative of a lin of x is just 1 over x. That's how I got this. Now, did you get to that? Oh, I'm wrong. Oops. Oh, that's why. It's A. Right? Yeah. No, I'm not wrong. E was the wrong answer. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Was that the... No. So 2 times lin of x over x... Plus 2 over x. Did you get to this part? Is this okay? Or wh where did I lose? Anything? I mean, I had the wrong answer. Yeah. So then, the wrong answer. Okay. Yeah, I'm dumb then. Oh, well. I'll ed I won't edit that out of the video. That's that. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, I was just reading it too fast. I was like, oh, Linz. Okay, this looks like they're combined. I mean, that's the problem, like, multiple choice sometimes. Like, when I've done practice AP tests, it's like, 
Oh, of course I know it. I just went too fast. Her, her, her. This is annoying where it cuts off that way. Okay. You can see it enough. So, it says f of x is e to the 1 over x. Then find f prime of x. So, we're deriving this, right? So, ignoring answers. Derivative of e to the something is that e to that something. The derivative of 1 over x is negative 1 over x squared. This is worth memorizing. This happens enough. Or you can power rule it if you want to, but I like looking like this. So what looks closest to that? A. Yeah. A. And the other traps are, oh, I forgot negatives, or I just made up my own rules. There you go. Four. Zoom it in. All right, another chain rule thing. So if cosine squared, then what's the derivative? I'm going to rewrite this y. Because it's cosine of 3x being squared. So my outside is something squared. And then there's an inside that's cosine of something. And then the 3x. We have like a double chain rule going on. Whenever you... Like these always happen with double chain rules when they, they do the trig function. They try to hide it as a double chain rule. Ha ha. That's the trick. People don't realize it. The outside's something squared, so it'd be two times that something. Times derivative of cosine, which is negative sine of 3x. Times derivative of 3x, that. So 2 times negative times 3 is negative 6. Good traps in there of just, hey, do you understand chain rule or not? Cool. All right. Oh, great. Oh. Okay, well, I'm just going to do the work up here and then we'll look. So, another derivative chain rule. Outside of something to the fifth, there'll be five times that x cubed minus cosine x to the fourth times the derivative of the inside. This term is 3x squared. This will be derivative cosine posit will be positive sine of x because you flip the sine. Then I go, hey, which of those answers kind of looks like that? Um, e. There you go, E. Let's see. All right. I don't know. Those weren't too bad. I would, I'd hope not. Or, or if you're confused, let me know. But hey, AP style chain rule problems. Okay. Oh, this is going to be more work. Ugh. So the thing people are going to forget is for this part, you got to break this up. Let's zoom in. Hard to see. Or when you're doing implicit differentiation, people are going to forget that in this part, you got to split it up and product rule this. All right? So derivative 3x squared, oh, that's going to be 6x. That's it. Now for this part in here, 2x on one side and y on the other. So my derivative would be, again, my plan is f prime g plus f g prime for my order. So it'll be 2 times y plus 2x times y prime. I'm going to write dy dx. And then derivative of y squared is 2 times y and times the dy dx. And people sometimes forget to, that this derives to 0. They leave it as 1. That's probably this trap right here. That, that's a common mistake. But make sure you make it zero. Great. Now we've got to isolate the dy dx's. So I'm going to subtract 6x, subtract 2y. 
these cancel out. Left with 2x, y dx. Now, if you actually did work, you might skip some of these steps. Not write out as much as me. Fine. And then you want to factor out the dy dx. Ooh. Ooh. And what you're left in is 2x here plus 2y. So you're, you're trying to isolate this using those same algebra skills. Then divide both sides by that thing right here. 2x plus 2y. 2x plus 2y. And you get your dy dx equal to negative 6x minus 2y over 2x plus 2y. And then you look over here, none of them match. Ugh. Right? Well, because they want you to simplify. Now, one thing here, each term is divisible by 2. So I can just divide everything by 2. But after I do that, I get negative 3x plus 2y over x plus y. So that kind of gives me a little hint. You see, I've got these x plus y, so maybe it's that one, maybe it's that one, that one. Now, you're like, none of those match. Why is it 2y, idiot? Just y. Plus y. Now, what? Oh, it's minus y. Double idiot. And what they actually did is they factored out the negative here, so that's why it's a. Wait, it's not a. That's why it's b. Because you factor out the negative. Get negative 3x plus y over x plus y. So it's b. Okay. Any, anyone on that? All right, moving on. Watch chat too. Moving on. Oh, an inverse function. Okay, I'm not even looking at the answers. Just I, let's let's just do my inverse. So you're like, oh man, what do I do? I got to do that one table. Whenever I see inverse, I just start right in the table. And what goes everywhere? This is my x, my y, and then the y prime. And then these two are my inverse functions. Now, I have the functions f and g are differentiable, and they're inverse functions. How do I know which one to put on the bottom and top? You figure out what you're trying to solve. Since I'm trying to solve for g prime, g here, put an f here. All right? I mean, I guess it ultimately doesn't matter. But, oh, okay. So then I'm just working. Working with what I got. One thing I got here is I'm working when g prime's negative 2. Since that's negative 2, this is negative 2. The y value for f of x. And... Oh. You're like, well, what else? Oh, but they tell, now, sometimes you go straight to here, but they don't tell you this. They don't say what an F of blah, blah, blah equals negative two. They don't have that. So I just got stuck, but they have this thing. What that means when G is negative two, the Y value is five. That means I could put a 5 up here. Oh, they, they tricked me a little bit. So, and then they have this piece of information. When the derivative is 5, you put a negative 1 half here. Reciprocal it, it's going to be negative 2. It's just reciprocal, not opposite, right? Just reciprocal. Yeah. I think it's opposite. 
Uh, I don't know. That was kind of a dumb question. They didn't really give you much information. No good traps. So I would say negative 2e. Yeah. It just was asked in a different way. But they didn't give you a lot of trap information, though. That's unfortunate. I mean, they could have written that better. That's a test of, do you know how to do inverses? All right, this one. Derive it, plug in zero. Cool. But it's more chain rule garbage. So your inside is this mess. F prime of X is going to be one over that mess. And then times the derivative of that mess. One, derivative of X, or is zero. This will be e to the negative 3x times negative 3. Now you're plugging in zero. Okay, that's where they're getting clever. What happens when I plug in zero? Get 1 over 0 plus 4, and I get e to the 0 power. Negative 3 times 0. e to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. So I get that. Then times 1 plus this guy is also going to be e to the 0. So 1 times negative 3. I have 1 minus 3 on top and 4 plus 1 on bottom. That's times. So negative 2 fifths A. Okay. Not too bad. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, you probably lost this negative, right? You lost any? This negative three? Yeah, so you, this, this would be the thing that people mess up, so that's why they do two-fifths. So chain rule, because that's e to the negative three x, would be negative three. So what's going on right there? Like there's nothing, there's no negatives on the bottom here. It's a negative three X. You're not deriving this at all. Uh, what you probably did is for this top part right here, probably just turn that into one plus three over four plus one. Did you do that? Okay. Oh, maybe, so maybe you didn't chain rule this when you derived it. You just forgot. Because when you're deriving this thing for the inside, e to the negative 3x, negative 3x times negative 3. My guess is you just kind of uh, forgot about this. Or maybe you didn't write this. And then it's 1 plus 1. That's what I think happened. Yep. All right. Moving on. Two more. Oh, okay, so this is like a chain rule, but given like the information, not the equation. That's cool. So when I'm told this and find h prime of 1, the first thing I'd want to do is find h prime of x. Sometimes this stuff's on free response questions too. And so I would show my work of doing h prime of x. The f prime of g of x, then times the derivative of the inside, prime of x. Good to write that out first. This was free response. It's probably worth something. Then I'd write h prime of 1, f prime of g of 1, times g prime of 1. Like, this is worth points doing this. This was free response. Now, I got to plug in. So you plug in your g of 1 first. You got to plug the inside. f prime of Two times g prime of one, negative three, and then f prime of two, negative four. That equals positive one two. D. E. Okay. Seem too bad. D. 
right? I'm going to do this last one. Okay, so far, not, not, not too bad. So what do I do here? Uh, okay, if you're crazy, you could expand it all, but I think the intention is product rule. And then probably you have to do some factoring to get the real solution. So f prime, the derivative of that would be 1 times x squared plus to the third plus regular f times 3 times the x squared plus 2 squared times the derivative of the inside 2x. You got that mess right there. Problem is, nothing matches up yet. I'm going to clean this up. And then this is x. I'm going to put the 6x on the outside. And x minus 1. And x squared plus 2 squared. All right. Does anything match up yet? No. So, I mean, I probably would eliminate e because I don't see a negative this at all but this is where like you look at these other answers they're one term answers looks like they factored things out what can you factor but what can you factor what's the common factors in each of these terms so this one just has three of these things you're not expanding your factoring I mean I guess no you don't want to. you have three of these things this has a 6 and x and x minus 1, and then two of those things. But guess what? I can factor two of these things out and with two of these things here. That's your greatest factor here, and that's, I think, the, the trick. x squared plus 2 to the squared power. What you're left here is just one of these left, the 1 power if you care. And then this has 6x, x minus 1. So it looks closer between C and D. And B. It could be B. But, okay, it looks like they kind of expanded this out. So let's, let's write this. Got to, like, format this. x squared plus 2. Oh, we got to distribute this 6x. Man, 6x squared minus 6. So what does it come out to if you combine like terms? You're like, hey, these are like terms. 7x squared. And these two are like terms. Minus 4. What did I do? Ah? Huh? What did I lose? Lost something. Where's the negative six? Oh. Oh, minus six? Where's the six X? Oh my uh, six X. Oops. D. E. Yeah. Ah. Uh. Thank you for multiple choice. There you go. Stop the video.